Welcome to July's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is single number three. Given an array of numbers, nums, in which exactly two elements appear once and all other elements appear twice, find the two elements that appear only once. Immediately when I saw this problem, I've seen single number two, so I know this is a bitwise manipulation problem. But let's first solve it straightforward. We could just create a lookup and say this is a set. And what we could do is go through all the nums, in, nums and if the num is not in, oops, is not in the lookup, we'll add it to the lookup. Else, we'll remove it from the lookup, and that's going to leave us the two numbers that only appeared once, and we could just return that as a list. And that itself would work. Um, let's make sure. Looks like it works. And if we submit that, so that, that would get accepted. But this isn't the answer that they're looking for. They, they want us to use bit manipulation. All right. So to do that, I'm going to try to explain this on the whiteboard a little differently today. I'm going to use my tablet and just see how that works out. So let's turn here. And imagine that we had... Um, a list like something like this. One, two, two, three, three, four. So we know just from looking at it that the answer is going to be one and four, right? Now from bit, if you remember your bit manipulations, there's um, the XOR that we could use to find out which number only appears once. So let's represent these as uh, bits. Starting with one, we'll start with zero, zero, one, zero, come on, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, uh, zero, one, one, this is our threes, and this is the four. So if we did an XOR operator through all these numbers, starting with the number zero, uh, we would end up with the number that only appears once because the numbers that appear twice would cancel each other out with this XOR. But there's an issue here because there's two numbers that appear only once, right? So let's just go through it first and see what happens. We start with having a number one and we'll do our XOR. And what does that result in? Starts with, starts with one. Now we take that number and then XOR it to the next one. And this equals three, take that next word to here again what do we get we get uh, 0 0 1 now we take 0 0 1 next word here what do we get we get 0 1 0 take that next word here what do we get we get 0 0 1 and finally we put it here 0 0 1 and next word that's going to equal um, 1 0 1 so what is that 1 0 1 that's 4 plus one and that equals five right so what is this number here unfortunately if the number only appeared once this would be the number that appears only once in our list but this actually is a comp is going to result in um, the number one that we're looking for with xor number two equaling five so now the trick is, how do we figure out these two numbers? And if you look, like, you just look, 0, 0, 1, and uh, 1, 0, 0. Oh, I'm sorry, 1, 0, 1. Well, that's not right. No, that's 4. So this is 4, 1, 0, 0. That equals 1, 0, 1, right? Yeah, so 1 and 4 is our answer. So this is the trick to figure out. Now, now the only part is, well, from this number that we figured out, how can we get number 1 and number 2? Okay, so we have R5, which is represented like this. And there's a trick where we want to find, get the first bit that exists inside of our number that's going to be 1. So we want to calculate the first bit here. And we can already see it's like this number in its first position. That's going to be the, the first number that equals 1. Um, and to do that, like there's a way that we could just trick it. 
Uh, what we could do is subtract one from the five, so subtract one here, and this is gonna be zero, zero. And we could uh, multiply it by itself and then do an XOR again to find the uh, bit representation of the first bit that is one from this number. So what we do is we'll take five minus one, we'll XOR it from our five, and this is gonna result in zero, zero, 001, right? So let me just make sure that's right. Zero, zero, and one, zero, one. Oh, yeah, and we're actually gonna have to do an and um, right here as well, and with, with itself to make sure that um, uh, we, we count for when it ends with zero. So we do an and five. Anyway, th this number, we'll consider that our first bit. And what we can do now is go through our, our nums of one, what was it, one, two, two, three, three, four. And if these numbers contain this first bit right here, then do the same XOR. Do the same XOR that we're doing and that's gonna actually end up with our number one. If we just do an XOR with, with uh, if, if the num basically contains this first bit here, then do the, do the XOR um, with itself. Num one and do an XOR. And whatever results at the end, that's gonna be our number one. And if we have number one, uh, since we know that our uh, results from the before, the five is just equal to num one, you know, num two. So that just means we could find num two by saying, okay, whatever five is with XOR num one, that's gonna be our second number. So yikes. Um, that was a mouthful and it definitely is not easy. This is not an easy question. Um, and I did not figure this out by myself. I had to look it up. Yeah, so let me just code it out and we'll figure, hopefully things will make a little bit more sense as we go along. <clears throat> so for, well, first we wanna start with indicating our, X, <clears throat> our combined XOR number. And we'll start with zero. So for n in nums, what will we do? We'll say, XOR uh, equals the XOR of itself with num. And now we're gonna end up with our combined XOR. And we, if you remember, we know this XOR e is equal to num one, um, like that. Okay, so we need to first figure out our first bit trick. And to do that, what do we do? We get our XOR, we minus one, we have to XOR it and by its, with itself. And we take this and do an XOR again to get that first bit. Okay, so for, uh, first get our num1, we'll start with zero, and we'll say for n in nums. So we'll actually go have to go through this list again and we'll say if n contains this first bit, well then do the same thing as we did before. And whatever results here should be the one of the numbers. And we can just return a list of num1 as well as num1 xor of whatever the xor that we found last time. So let me test this out, uh, see if I made any mistakes here. It looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and submit that. And there we go. <laughs> so this is a hard question. This is a very hard question. And again, I wouldn't put too much effort into learning these kinds of things unless you want to be a competitive programmer or you just find it very interesting because ultimately this is not something you could really figure out. Like, if you've never seen it before quickly. I think with the XOR thing, uh, if you can just know that, you can use that to figure out um, 
canceling out numbers that appear twice and finding numbers that only appear once or at least one number that would probably be enough this is like a lot trickier especially this little trick here um yeah so like just look into it i, I don't think it's that important to memorize everything so so yeah that's it uh thanks for watching my channel and remember do not trust me i know nothing